Okay, so over the weekend, Debian version 13 was released. This is a major release. They come back every two years. And in the Linux world, it's a big deal. It's kind of like if there is a major release of Windows or Mac OS or Android or iOS or whatever. This is a big thing. Now, in this video, I want to explain to you why is it a big thing? Why is it so important in the Linux world when a new version of Debian is released? And actually, what's in this release? What's new? What's important? And so on. So if you want to find out more, please... Let me explain. Okay, so let's get into this. So Debian 13 is out and after a development journey spanning two years, one month and 30 days. So two years, two months, Debian 13 has officially arrived. Now, why is Debian such an important uh, release when it happens? Why does it matter? Well, a new stable release of Debian is important because of the unique place that it holds in the Linux uh, ecosystem. First and foremost, it is a distinctive Linux distro of its own right. It guarantees that its core system and all of its components will always be free and open source. And by free, we mean free as in freedom, not necessarily at cost, although, of course, it is actually free as in cost to download and to use. Debian is renowned for its rock solid stability, a characteristic that makes it a favorite for servers and for critical systems. And this stability is no accident. It's a result of a meticulous and lengthy development and testing process. As you saw there, two years since the previous one. So it's not something you can claim that it's on the bleeding edge. They've always got the latest, the greatest. Maybe it will fail. Maybe it's not going to work. Two years, lots of testing. and What you get at the end is something you can really rely on. Now, not only is it important in its own right, Debian is also the base for a multitude of other distributions. The most prominent of those, of course, is Ubuntu, which itself is the foundation for other distributions like Linux Mint. And I've got lots of videos here on this channel about Ubuntu, about Linux Mint, comparing them, comparing other versions with the similar desktops. Loads of videos here. Do check out my Linux playlist if you're interested in any of those. Also important is the Linux Mint Deb Ian edition. It aims to be as similar as possible to Linux Mint, but without using Ubuntu. The package base is provided by Debian itself. So not only do we have uh, Ubuntu and then Linux Mint, there is a kind of a, a Debian version of Linux Mint, which is as close as it can be to Linux Mint, but it doesn't use Ubuntu at all. It goes straight back to the foundation to Debian. Now the Debian family of operating systems is one of the largest and most popular in the Linux ecosystem. So, so many distros find their roots or have an actual base of Debian. Now, when talking about Debian, Ubuntu, Linux, Mint, so it's easy to think about 64-bit x86 systems, i.e. PCs. Will this run on my PC? Will this run on my laptop? And that is absolutely great, and that is true. But it is also essential for the 64-bit ARM ecosystem, especially for the Raspberry Pi. The default and de facto OS for the Raspberry Pi range of 64-bit single board computers is Raspberry Pi OS, which is based on Debian. So this new release will have an impact also on versions of Raspberry Pi OS, which will then have an impact on all the people that are running Raspberry Pi OS on their Raspberry Pi boards. Now, talking now for of PCs and Raspberry Pi, uh, Debian 13 officially supports RISC 64-bit, allowing users to run Debian on 64-bit hardware and benefit from all of the same features. And in total, there are seven architectures that are supported. 64-bit PCs, that's uh, AMD 64 or x86 64. 64, 64-bit ARM. There's also uh, ARM L, as they call it, so that's ARM v6. There's also ARM v7, so there's three different ARM architectures that are all supported by Debian. Then you've got 64-bit PowerPC, 64-bit RISC-V, as we said, and it also supports IBM System Z. Now, 32-bit is slowly dying. I386 is no longer supported as a regular architecture, and there is no official kernel and no Debian installer for 32-bit 386 uh, systems. And I think that includes 386 and 486 and 686, really. And ARM L, that's the ARM V6 that we just mentioned, is no longer supported as a regular uh, architecture. There's no installer for ARM L systems. And for the Raspberry Pi 1, the Raspberry Pi 0 and the Raspberry Pi W, all of which are ARM V6 uh, based systems, and of course that then bleeds into Raspberry Pi OS, 
Uh, it still supports the kernel for those, but the install and all that's going to have to come from somewhere else. And Debian 13 will be the last release for ARM L uh, architecture. And the MIPS architecture has been removed completely because MIPS as a company no longer exists. Nobody bought it. In fact, the name when it did get bought, a company bought it and they started making RISC-V processes. So MIPS is basically, there's no one doing anything to do with MIPS anymore. So it's kind of dead and they say, just don't even bother uh, with that anymore. Now, Debian 13 moves to the Linux kernel 6.12. Uh, and that's up from 6.1 with the previous uh, Debian, Debian 12. So lots has happened in the Linux kernel 6, 6.1, including the addition of real-time preemption, a new scheduler, and a new file system, and that's bcache.fs, although there has been some controversy in recent releases about bcache.fs, whether it'll actually even stay in the kernel. But up until 6.12, it was there. Both 6.1 and 6.12 are LTS, long-term support, which means they offer multiple years of official support. At the moment, 6.12 will be supported until December 2026. However, that is likely to be extended because now that Debian has opted for it, it will get a large user base. There'll be lots of people using it and for sure that will be extended. So what is this change to the preemptive multitasking that we talked about? Well, after 20 years of living as an out-of-tree patch set, the real-time preemption model became part of mainline, the mainline in its kernel, in 6.12. Now, it's not enabled by default. You have to enable it inside of the configuration, but it is now there included. Now, it's a set of patches that transforms the Linux kernel into a fully preemptible real-time uh, kernel, enabling deterministic and low-latency behavior crucial for embedded systems, robotics, audio processing, and industrial automation. And for sure, there will be people who, uh, companies and people that use this new version of Debian and enable that in the kernel and use it in those different areas. Now, initial support covers quite a range of processors. X8664, ARM64 and RISC-V all have the preemptive patches uh, applied uh, to the kernel. And it is used by distributions like Ubuntu Pro, which is uh, for real time, uh, MontaVista, which is a, an embedded uh, version of Linux. I actually had a job interview with Mon Monta Vista once uh, and various other uh, industrial uh, Linux deployments. The other change I said was the scheduler. So this is the EEVDF. Rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? So it's the earliest legible virtual deadline first. It's a new task schedule that was officially merged into Linux kernel 6.6, .6, replacing the long-standing completely fair scheduler CFS. Each task is assigned a virtual deadline based on its CPU entitlement. The scheduler picks the task closest to its deadline with the earliest eligible deadline. That's what it means. Ensuring a fair and responsive execution. And that's now there in Debian 13. Now, a quick look side by side for the desktops. We've got an upgrade from GNOME 43 to GNOME 48. We've got KDE Plasma 5 up to KDE Plasma 6.3. LXDE goes up to version 13. LXQT up to version 2.1. And for XFCE, a jump from 4.18 to 4.2. 20. So you can see there in some of these ones, quite big leaps in the desktops that are now available. Two years is a long time, especially in desktop development. So that's quite interesting. Now a brief overview of what those mean. So with GNOME 48, you've got features like digital well-being, HDR display support, improved Wayland performance with dynamic triple buffering. In KDE Plasma 6.3, it's the first Debian release that built on Plasma 6. So that means it's built on QT6 and the KDE Framework 6. Now, some of that, you don't quite sure what it means. Why QT6? What does that mean? Well, I do have some videos here comparing different KDE Linux distributions, and I do cover some of that in those videos. Again, check out my Linux playlist. And uh, XFCE and LXDE and LXQT all add or improve their Wayland support. So that is the way things are going. And the other final big change we talk about is this now has apt 3.0 in it. So apt, that's the advanced package tool, is Debian and its derivatives like Ubuntu's core package manager. So if you want to install something, even if you're using the command line or the user interface, the graphical user interface, it will in the end call this tool to do it. These changes do impact 
uh, both sets of ways of using it. New features include the new package resolver, which is called uh, Resolver 3, which is designed to improve how apt handles complex package dependencies. And the command line interface has been updated with a more visually clear and concise output. It now uses color coding, green for additions, red for removals. It also features a Unicode power progress bar for more intuitive installation experience and better spacing to separate sections clearly. So it looks nicer. It's more pretty. Okay, so they have it, Debian 13. Will you be upgrading? Are you using a Linux distro based on this? Are you waiting for that to filter through to your distro? Love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos, then I invite you to stick around by subscribing to the channel. Also, please do check out my Patreon page. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.